All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about three mistakes I made starting out in kind of the filmmaking freelance world. Uh, three things that I wish I would have done differently or somebody would have told me. So here I am telling you to help you save some time maybe. Disclaimer, these are kind of my experiences. So if you completely disagree with what I'm saying, don't hold it against me, please. It's just, you know, I'm just putting it out there, seeing how it goes. So. That being said, my name is Wesley Scott. If you guys haven't been here before, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button below if you guys like this video. Let's go ahead and jump into tip number one. So tip number one is gonna be talking around money. And I think this is something that we're all a little curious about when we're starting out. Something that we're a little, something that feels really unfamiliar and kind of scary at times. So something I wanted to talk about is a mistake I made was not knowing how much I was worth or even how to come up with a budget to give the client of like, how much is this video gonna cost me? And I think that's a big question a lot of us ask when we start out in the filmmaking area. So I'm gonna give you a really basic formula for you to kind of start out on this journey and you can change it over time when things get more complex. But keeping it simple, we're gonna be talking about a cost plus based pricing system. Now what this means is basically understanding what your cost is for a project. You know, you started a business, you're starting a freelance business and you've invested some time into mics and cameras and lighting and all that stuff. And that costs something, that's an investment for you. So a simple way is kind of figuring out how much you've already put in the business. And a simple way of doing this is looking up how much your gear would cost to rent on an hourly or daily basis. This will kind of give you an, an idea of how much your investment cost is. Then on top of that, you have to take an account of how much your time's worth. How much do you want to get paid? If you're just starting out and you don't have anything of a portfolio or this is like kind of your very first jobs, I'm going to recommend starting for free. Start getting paid in experience when you're first starting out. It's not something you want to hear, but it's important to start building up experience and start building up a good portfolio before you start negotiating with clients on your budget. Because when you're first starting out, you want to kind of just take every job you can and regardless of the budget. If it has one, great. If it doesn't, it's still good practice and you should start building up your portfolio and then you can move on to adjusting your price. But that's going to be the next part of understanding your cost is figuring out how much you're worth, whether that's minimum wage, $50, $100 an hour, wherever you want it, however valuable you see your time to be, add that into the cost. Now, sum that all up and that's gonna be your cost. Now, for the cost plus, something that I made the mistake of doing, which is kind of funny to say this because I was trying to run a business, is forgetting about profit. If you're just giving a budget to your client that just has your cost, you're literally breaking even every single time. And this is what I was doing for a long time and it was really, really, really hard to save money or buy equipment or anything like that. So something you wanna do in this cost plus idea of pricing is figure out your cost and then add your profit. How much profit do you wanna be making on each job so that you can save money, cover your expenses, and eventually invest back into the business because that's important to do. If you don't really have an idea around that, start with around 20, 30% of your cost and that's a good standing point. That's gonna be my first suggestion on if you're just starting out and the mistake I made of not knowing how to give a budget. The format of cost plus pricing is a really simple way and a good idea when starting out to not complicate things if you understand it well. So let's move on to tip number two. So my second mistake starting out was not leaving enough time for my productions. Now starting out I really didn't like doing pre-production. I don't know why it just was not vibing. I thought it was kind of boring. Um, it took a long time, not that long, but it took a long time. Um, and I just want to like get to shooting. I want to press that record button really quick. Over time though, I found that not doing pre-production really hindered my filmmaking ability and it usually would make projects take longer if I didn't have a good solid idea up front. I'd often go into filming with kind of just a shot list inside my head or a half written down shot list and then the rest in my head. That brought up a problem of not always getting the right footage I needed or not having a full idea of what I needed to capture that day for the project to be fully finished. Furthermore, when I got into the editing room, because I didn't have a clear idea of how each shot was supposed to go together, I'd spend a longer time trying to come up with a story and kind of pull a story out of the footage I had rather than piece 
piecing the video clips together from a pre-planned story idea that I already had and just kind of fit them together like puzzle pieces. So the problem with that is it'd take a lot more time and it'd be a lot more stressful. Something I wish I did differently was spend some time in pre-production. Spend some time really coming up with a good idea, really coming up with a vision for the project and understanding if it was client work, what they really needed from me. Then from there, going into doing some research and seeing what other people have done before me, seeing how I could get inspiration from other creatives for the specific project. Then going in and creating a shot list, a detailed shot list of things I know I would need on the day of filming. And that way it could go a lot more efficiently on the film day and a lot more efficiently in the editing room and that was kind of the mistake I made <coughs> oh, I'm okay let's move on so mistake number three was not knowing my camera settings now I shoot on Sony and if any of you know the Sony menu system you know it's kind of atrocious and it's big and unorganized. So mistake number three was not knowing my camera settings and where different settings were, where different tools were for the camera. Because what happens is when you get on set and you're ready to film and you're like, I need to change white balance. And you're like scrolling through of like, wait, where's white balance again? And if you don't have it set to a custom key or anything like that, you're like just scrolling for five minutes trying to find white balance. And that's no fun. And that doesn't look professional. So that was a mistake I made. So my biggest tip to you is learn your camera settings inside and out. Set up hotkeys, set up custom buttons for your camera so that you can quickly toggle through your most used settings. Also know your menu systems and where things are. This will keep you more efficient when you're on set and only have a certain amount of time to get stuff done. You don't want to be spending that time just scrolling through your menu system. You want to be using that time to do other things like setting up lighting and making sure your shot looks good. So it's really important to learn and set up habits to understand your camera and how it functions and how it works. Set up custom buttons for your most used settings and just knowing your camera inside and out is a really good thing to have. So, you know, spend five, 10 minutes just scrolling through your camera every day. So you're gonna set these habits in place so when you need to change white balance, so when you need to change your shutter speed, when you need to change your aperture, or more complicated settings, when you need to format your card or anything like that, you know exactly where to go to and it only takes you a couple of seconds versus a couple of minutes. It's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run and it makes you look more professional like you know what you're doing. And we want that when we're starting out because we don't know what we're doing, but we wanna look like we know what we're doing Fake it till you make it, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's gonna be it for today, guys. I hope you learned something from these mistakes and it saves you some time along the journey of learning filmmaking as you're starting out. Hit that like and subscribe button if you guys haven't already. And let me know below if you're more experienced in filmmaking, what was your top three mistakes starting out or what were three things you would do different starting out in the freelance world. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, go drink some coffee, go be creative, and I'll see you in the next one. I think I already said that. Anyway. I'm out. Yeah, let's go.